Now, for those of you who are stuck in an ongoing toxic relationship right now, maybe with family members, in-laws, coworkers, try not to fall into the trap of questioning whether or not you said the wrong thing. Ultimately, narcissistic abuse has nothing to do with what you say or don't say. Narcissistic abuse is the result of narcissistic personality disorder. And once you accept this as the harsh truth, you'll be able to start to take the pressure off of yourself so you don't feel like you're walking on eggshells. My name is Kevin, and this is The Royal We. Now, before we start talking about why it doesn't matter what you say or don't say in a toxic relationship, I want to let you know that I am here for your support. Those of you who are struggling through a toxic relationship right now, I do take one-on-one -on -one appointments. Down in the description box below this video, you'll find access to my calendar where you can schedule that one-on-one -on -one time with me, and I look forward to talking with you. Now, it's very easy to start to take on the pressure and the burden of questioning whether or not you are saying the right thing or the wrong things in a toxic relationship. This is typical when you start to experience narcissistic rage and you're being cussed at and you're being called names and you're being demeaned and you're being devalued and you're being told things like you're selfish and you're judgmental and you're toxic and on and on and on. It's really easy to stand back and go, whoa, whoa what did I say? What could I have said differently? I, I tried to stand up for myself and, and this starts the imbalance, so to speak, of you no longer walking straight and upright and confident, but instead you feel like you're walking on eggshells, which I, I don't even know if I really like the analogy of walking on eggshells. I'm trying to get an image of, of this, but really you're just kind of unstable. That's really the best image. You're walking unstable, less confident, and you're just trying to figure out what you're doing wrong. What an, an enormous amount of pressure you're putting on yourself that doesn't have to be there. Because narcissistic abuse has nothing to do with you. Okay? So why do we do this? Why do we put this pressure on ourselves? Why are you carrying the burden of questioning whether or not you're saying the right or wrong things in the situation? Well, I believe subconsciously you're still stuck thinking that you can somehow fix the situation. Subconsciously, you still believe that there's a reason that person is mean which means you still struggle to understand narcissistic personality disorder. You still have a hard time allowing that to sink in, that it's a personality disorder, and it has nothing to do with you. It's just like bipolar personality disorder. It has nothing to do with other people. Borderline personality disorder, okay? We don't like to think about these things because... We have a hard time sometimes separating ourselves from others. And in addition to that, I believe one of the cruelest tricks that narcissistic personality disorder people pull off, and I don't know if this is just unique to them, but they do trick you in the beginning. Because in the beginning, they're shy. In the beginning, they are interested. In the beginning, they're curious. In the beginning, they are love-bombing. And you don't really see the cruelty and the meanness of their personality disorder until later on. So naturally, it leads you to believe that there's something wrong or there's something that you've done. But let me ask you a question. Now that you've been dealing with a toxic relationship, has it really mattered? Did you only receive narcissistic abuse when you said something back? Or did you receive demeaning, devaluing, narcissistic, rageful comments, even when you were being nice. And if you think about this and you answer this question, honestly, there you'll find your answer. When you question whether or not you said the wrong thing, you'll find your answer. And here's what the answer looks like. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I stand up for myself. It doesn't matter if I'm nice and loving and giving. That toxic person or those toxic people are still going to be angry rageful, hateful. They're going to call me names. They're going to cuss me out. And this gets into the harsher truth and the harsher reality of it. And that is that that person's rage and anger and frustration in life has nothing to do with you. 
It has nothing to do with what you say or don't say. This is why they are narcissistically abusive, even when you're nice, even when you're quiet. And so if you take this into consideration and you accept this, and by accept it, mean it means you detach from it, you detach from any responsibility for what comes out of their mouth, and you just look at it objectively, you say, wow, that person is just angry and they're hate-filled. And it doesn't matter if I stand up for myself and tell them to knock it off. It doesn't matter if I'm quiet and I'm being loving. They're still going to be rageful. And this is hard. We don't like to think of, of this in that way because we like to try to figure things out, right? We like to try to find a way to resolve the conflict. But this is a conflict that you're never going to be able to resolve. Why? Because you're dealing with somebody and their personality type. When we talk about narcissistic people, it is their personality. It is, it's them. Listen, and, and they will tell you this. A narcissistic person will tell you, I, I cuss, I scream, I shout, that's who I am. And yet, a lot of times we're walking back going, no, 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 I, I can fix that. I, I can make that better. No, you can't. But Kevin, it's not fair because they didn't do that in the beginning of the relationship. Of course not. They were shy. They were timid in the beginning. They were on their best behavior because they wanted to bring you in close enough to where they can show you who they really are. And now, and it's a sad trick. I get it. It hurt me too. It's a very sad trick. It's a mean, cruel trick that they do to pretend to be nice and quiet, to bring you in, to suddenly lash out. It's a cruel trick, no doubt. But nonetheless, we immediately need to start to change our thinking. Wow. What you, whatever you're showing me, whatever that toxic person is showing has nothing to do with you and what you say and don't say. So now a lot of you will say, well, then how do I start to become more authentic? Well, the truth is, is we need to learn to be okay with what we say, not because of the reaction, but because of how it makes us feel. So if you want to stand up for yourself in a situation with a toxic person, with a narcissistic person, maybe say, stop calling me names, go home, leave, do it because it makes you feel something by saying it, not because of the reaction. This is how we're going to learn to be more authentic. In other words, once you accept and understand that narcissistic people are narcissistic, not because of what you say, but because of who they are, then you say things based on who you are, which means if you don't want to be cussed at and called names, you want to stand up to somebody and say, don't call me names and don't cuss at me. Knock it off. Let the fact that you just said that be authentic enough to fill you with feeling some sort of relief just by saying it. Okay? That's it. Not the reaction. Be ready because the reaction is going to be terrible. The reaction is going to be a narcissistic person is going to say, you're selfish and you're judgmental and I hate you and blah, 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 blah. Okay. But understand, again, that's who they are. So really, you're just left with trying your best to say things authentically from you that come from you. What you're going to find over time is that you're going to drive narcissistic people away from you because they're going to see that you're not into playing games. You're saying stuff that's just from you that makes you feel good. They're going to call you selfish and this and that, and that's fine. Let them. Let them. And let them go away, right? But don't engage with thinking, oh, I didn't say the right thing. I should have said it differently and blah, blah, blah. Listen, you're always going to grow and, and you're going to learn to do better at saying things in different ways, right? But don't worry when you're dealing in a toxic relationship on whether or not you're saying or not saying the right or wrong thing because, again, it doesn't matter. Just show up and be authentic if you have to show up at all, right? Ultimately, you shouldn't have to show up. <laughs> but if you have to, if it's a work situation or a certain family situation. Don't worry about not saying the, the right thing. Worry about your boundaries. Worry about what's going to make you feel safest in the moment. All right? Listen, I want to be a part of your healing journey. Down below in the description box, you'll find access to my calendar. One-on-one -on -one appointments are available. FaceTime, WhatsApp video calls are available. Text message consultations are available. Uh, also, Monday night is where we live chat, where we come together as a community. Saturday morning is where we fellowship and end up Bible study. And I'll be back with more videos for you right here on The Royal Week.